Okay, so we're back. I hope you had a chance to uh, take a break, get a drink or something. I got my coffee. Well, actually, I got a drink of cold water first, and then I got a coffee. <clears throat> These uh, lamps we use to improve the visibility in the video, they get a little hot after a while. <clears throat> especially when the windows are closed to cut down on the sound it's a uh, typhoon day and it's a little windy outside anyway in the first video which I discovered was not about 60 minutes but closer to 75 uh, we went through the Lukens Meyer and Torres booklet the sections we chose to read public deliberation a a manager's guide to citizen engagement and the focus there of course is citizen engagement but you will go back and look at that title and go oh yeah deliberation so it's talking about things with an aim to make decisions okay? not just telling people what happened that's fine now what we're gonna do in the next 30 40 minutes is look at a couple of other ideas in the Lukens Meyer we saw two different kinds of tables or charts or listings and here we're gonna look at the OECD article the active participation framework which is a one-page document and it's 2001 you might remember that in the Lukens Meyer article they referred to OECD 2003 um, things changed very slightly <clears throat> but we saw there was a five level model and a four level model that kind of cut out a lot of the top right uh, that the fourth level in the four level model included a little bit of feeling about that fifth level but also cut out some of that fifth level well today we're going to talk about another model or this this hour and when we look at this hour we're we're going to just quickly look at the picture and you can see information consultation and active participation that is different from one more model, which I'm going to look at here before we go onto that page. Another model, a user model of citizen participation. And in this case, we understand that we create committees to represent the citizens who are users. They're not partners. Instead, it's more like, um, let's ask the customers what they think. Well, we're going to create committee. And especially, we're focusing on vulnerable groups, groups that are disadvantaged. So, for example, homeless people or uh, the elderly who are no longer working, especially poor elderly. Now, it's hard to get people to join these committees specifically from those groups because they're poor, because they're elderly and not feeling well. So we may have to get representatives who are speaking for those groups instead of actually being of those groups. Still, government is trying to connect with the people that government is concerned about. Another model is something we could call a mediator model, where government is working through local NGOs, community-based NGOs. Now, it is possible they could be working with national NGOs that have a particular target of this group. Again, in our class, we mostly think city level, but we could be talking na national level. So. Um, if we're concerned about smoking, maybe we're working with an anti-smoking 
NGO. If we're concerned about uh, drunk drivers, maybe we're working with a drunk driver's uh, NGO. If we're worried about a particular community that is disadvantaged, let's say uh, migrant workers, then maybe we're working with a migrant worker self-help group. These NGOs are working to provide a better society. Now, sometimes there's a problem when these NGOs are getting government money, yet they're supposed to be competing with government or conflicting with government because they should represent these disadvantaged people. The problem is that if I'm getting money from government, can I safely then tell government, no, you're wrong, that's the wrong thing to do. So when we might lose our autonomy, we might lose our independence, we might lose our ability to speak the truth because we're taking benefits from government. We call that co-optation. Co-optation. I'm the, the power is controlling me when I'm supposed to be doing something else. I have co-opted myself. Uh, the government has made a move to make sure that I won't complain too much. And I have accepted that. But if there is no co-optation, then we can hope for a kind of a mediator role. And again, in this mediator, we're specifically saying, no, we're not talking to the, to the poor people. We're not talking to the... Uh, disadvantaged elderly. We're talking to an NGO that claims to represent them. So the user model, we hope we're talking to the citizens, might not be exactly the citizens, but we hope. But in a mediator model, we're working with NGOs who are probably providing services and probably helping to organize those people. The third level, the third model here, before we go into the OECD, is a direct model of citizen participation. The design here is that government, or a big organization, is trying to get citizens directly involved in the process. It's kind of the ideal when we talk about engagement and things like that. The downside is it could be negative. It could be citizens who are protesting, going down to City Hall and complaining that this is something no good. If government is listening, that would be a direct model. So these are very wide models. But the, the design is that the city is creating an environment where citizens can provide input into decision making. Now, actually, theoretically, that can go all the way from the lowest level of, of uh, information and communication. We have an open hall, and we invite citizens to talk, and city staff are there, and they write notes. Technically, that can include direct citizen participation. Okay, So we're not really talking about a quality of participation here. We're not talking about a quality. We're, talk, we're talking not about quality, but about form or medium, the way that we are connecting with citizens. Who are we talking to? Maybe is a better way of thinking. Who are we talking to when we are doing this kind of citizen participation? I'm not too crazy about this particular model, but it is another way to look at it. Think of it as the who are we talking to. Now we're going to get to uh, one more model. And what we're doing in this week, these two videos, is kind of setting up a few different designs so that next week when we get into Arnstein's Ladder, we have something to compare it to. Okay? You're graduate students. You don't have to adopt any particular design as the right answer. Instead, the focus 
is for you to critically analyze, to look at different models and say, this one is better because of this, but that one is better because of that, and this particular thing we can put together, or these two are talking about almost the same thing, but it's a little different because right? Analysis. Master's degree, doctoral degree, you're able to examine things and consider how it's different. Now, I don't expect our reporter to analyze and tell everybody what she or he sees. The reporter's job is to present what, to present in a review what was presented previously. So for next week, I hope our reporter will be able to present four models, right? The model on this page, the model in the OECD, and the two models in Lucas, Meyer, and Torres, and the various other key points that we talked about in the first video, and the very few key points we talk about in this OECD. So again, in the OECD, we can see information, consultation, active participation. There are arrows in these three images, which are interesting. Information, the blue circle would be government or the big organization. And information is only outbound in this model. We are announcing that. Da, 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 da. In the consultation model in this image, we see messages going each way. Not really sure how well each side is listening. Government talks to a person, a person talks back, but are they exactly talking about the same thing as each listening to the other? It's not clear in this very simple model. In the third, active participation, you can see that the government and the citizen are talking about the same thing. They're talking with each other. Maybe in consultation we could say they are talking to each other. And in the information we could say government is talking to citizens in consultation government is talking to citizens citizens are talking to government but are they talking about the same thing are they listening to each other it's not clear but in active communication they are talking with each other each is hearing and responding to the other add to that this other little image here which i have to move up a little bit this arrow moving right suggests that as we look to the right, we have an increasing level. Oh, I can't get here. We have an increasing level of citizen involvement and policy making. So citizens are more involved and their opinions carry more weight. They are more influential as we move to the right. This image in this page, we, we can't uh, copy paste from it, just a few words. And there's the uh, information about this article. I took this one page from this larger document. You can't see it because my face is in the way, right? This larger document, like a book, took this one page. This one page is actually presented in a different book, okay? And this book is available online. So this book is quoting this book, and I took it from there. All right, so let's go up and look at the OECD Active Participation Framework. So again, we have different people using different words, engagement, participation and 
Remember that uh, Lukensmeyer and Torres is suggesting that participation is an older word and it's not as good a word as engagement. So this paper in 2001 is kind of moving that track to where we're still using the word participation, but we're pushing towards something better. The OECD developed this analytical framework, a very simple framework to analyze things. This analytical framework for conducting comparative surveys and country case studies. All right, so we're going to look at how different countries are doing things, and we're going to try to design some kind of structure so that we can decide if a country is doing more like this or more like this or more like this. This is very much consistent with qualitative study. A quantitative study probably would have been designed in the beginning with a strict framework and would have forced things into that strict fr framework. But here we probably had the data coming in and now the analysis takes place with a well how do we treat this how do we treat this let's make some looser more flexible uh, categories so we got three here's the definitions information is a one-way relationship government produces and delivers information the information is for use of citizens it covers both passive access and active measures. Passive access means citizens want to know something and government goes, okay, here it is. But in many countries we have these kind of freedom of information uh, rules that citizens can do this form and say, please tell me about this. And if the government has the data and it's not top secret military safe defense, the government has to deliver it. That would be passive access. Citizens demand it, and they get it. Active measures by government would be, government says, we want you to know this. All right, so this is from my perspective of the citizen move, when we say passive. All right. Uh, the excuse me, a perspective of government. Passive of government means we don't do anything until we have to. Active of government says, we're doing this because we want you to know. We want to disseminate information. We want to share information. So the kind of information we're talking about could be public records, official gazettes, that would be like official magazines or newspapers that provide official information, and government websites. Pretty much one way. The second level is the consultation. Go back down and take a look again. Consultation. Consultation is a two-way relationship which citizens provide feedback. It is based on prior definition of, by the government of the issue. So government decides we want to know about this. Okay? Government defines, government decides what is the issue. And then we ask citizens to provide information. So government has to give some information so that citizens know how to answer. This is a uh, this is one of the two ways of consultation can work. Government defines the issues, sets the question, manages the process. Citizens are invited to provide an answers, like a survey or comments on draft legislation. Now that's the OECD principal definition of consultation. But as I said, we could be in a situation where the government defines the topic and says this is what we're going to do and then citizens answer or go to meetings and say what they want but it's not clear that they are listening to each other. Once again, the third level active participation this sounds more like an ideal a relation based on partnership 
where citizens actively, and there's the key word, engage, actively engage, actively participate. We don't say here exactly what's the difference, but active is not this passive we said before. Actively engage in defining the process and content. So government doesn't decide the questions to ask. Government doesn't decide what we're going to ask people. Citizens participate at an earlier stage in helping to set the question, helping to define the problem, helping to identify how are we going to talk about this? What's the process? Are we going to have a public hearing? Are we going to have a public survey? Are we going to put a um, message in all of the newspapers that say, please visit the website www.dalsagu.go.kr slash survey and there you'll find some questions. How are we going to get people to provide input? Or is the city going to send a mailing to every single address in the district, in the city? Are we going to make telephone calls, hire people to make telephone calls to all the phone numbers listed in the city? Who's going to decide how to do? Active participation acknowledges, recognizes equal standing for citizens with the city. Equal rights. The citizens are equal with the government in terms of setting the agenda. What is it we're talking about? Proposing policy options. What are our choices? And shaping the policy dialogue. Now that's kind of fuzzy what is shaping the policy dialogue. And I would refer you to your policy analysis class. Okay. The policy dialogue what is policy? How does it start? What are the stages of policy? Not just policy analysis, but what are the stages of policy? Right? Some people will say that policy starts from a problem. Some people will say that policy starts from a political campaign promise. Some people will say that policy starts somewhere else. But from A to Z, the development of a policy or the change of a policy and a policy could be very very practical we're not saying policy is only fuzzy policy can be something like how often do we open the city swimming pool do we open it at 6 a.m. every day or 5 a.m. every day do we not open it on Tuesdays and Wednesdays But in this active participation, we say that responsibility for final decision on policy formulation rests with government. Okay, so this is a little bit different from that four and five level model where we went into collaboration, right, where we gave more authority to the citizens. Active participation still says the final decision is made by government. And so they give examples in this particular case of consensus conferences, which I don't know what that is, and citizens juries. That's a broad concept that's not very well agreed upon. But again, this article is 20 years old. Later in this semester, we will talk about some different models will say better some different techniques for citizen engagement. What are different things we can do with citizens to collect citizen input? Alright, so this is the OECD 2001 model, information consultation and active participation. Close that. And so, wrapping up, we have a model here on the board. 
on the eboard. We have the OECD model. We have two models in the um, Lukensmeyer and Torres booklet. Next week, we'll talk about Arnstein's Ladder, which is an eight-step model. The week after that, we're going to talk about a variation on Arnstein's model, and we'll talk about why those two models are different, and we can kind of match up or try to align four models from today, and then Arnstein's, and then the other one, the name I've just forgotten. And then beyond that, we don't talk about particular models too much. We'll move on. I don't think I have the one after Arnstein's on the system yet. No, not yet. All right. So what happens here is we're going to talk about the eight rungs. A rung means the kind of the step on a ladder, especially in the old style wooden ladder where the step was kind of round. That's a rung, R-U-N-G. But you could just think of it as eight steps. So there's eight steps, and then I invite you to remember the three level from the OECD simple version, and we, and uh, the one that I put on the website, and the two in Look and Fire. And that'll be building these different models. The key point is to try to think about how citizens can participate and what we do with their participation. All right. That's about 27 minutes, and I think I'm done. Um, the university might complain that I'm a little bit short in time, but I think we've covered enough. I talked a lot. It's a lot of information here. Thank you very much. See you next week. I hope your COVID time is safe. I hope your Chusik time is enjoyable. Take care. Good night.